Hi everyone, we're Alchemists. back in 2015 when we went to New York Comic Con together and realized we wanted to take a bigger part in this awesome geek universe. So we started an Instagram and a YouTube channel uh, basically because we wanted to talk about the stuff that we love and because we noticed that there wasn't as much female representation in the industry. Yeah, yeah. And I'm looking around the room, <laughs> so it looks like our two lovely ladies are in here. Oh, there's and, a little lady in the back. Oh, and an awesome other two little ones. Yes, <laughs> the future. And uh, we noticed that, or actually it's a statistical fact that 72% of purchases in comic shops are made by men. So uh, we wanted to discuss why that is and if that's changing. So Yeah, I, I think it's changing, but um, it's definitely come a long way from when we were younger, right? Yeah, and I think that you have some pretty awesome memories from I do. childhood. Um, well, I mean, kind of. I didn't step into a comic book shop till I was like 20-something, but my mom used to take my brother to the comic shop, not me. But she would bring me back like these awesome Barbie comics, and I was like, oh my god, Which, by the so way, cool. she took every single Barbie comic that's out there right now. Sorry. If you're wondering why there are no Barbie comics, it's, um, <laughs> if it's you're because of me. <laughs> Uh, and then I didn't really get into comics again until I was, like, in my high school when I would spend all my time in the library because I had a lot of friends. And <laughs> I would hide in, like, the little art and music section. And I was like, oh, wow, graphic novels are, are in the library? They're, like, respected? <laughs> and I picked up Wonder Woman, um, the very first ones from, like, the 1940s when they were on, I think it was All-American. And Persepolis. And Persepolis was one of the first comics where I was like, wow, like, comics don't have to be about superheroes. And then it kind of just took off from there. So when I was a kid, I actually lived around the corner from a comic book shop. And in retrospect, I kind of wish that I had taken advantage of, of having a comic book shop so close to me. But essentially, as a kid, I would walk in there, and the only thing that they sold were Marvel and DC. And I was really never into the superhero genre. So I mostly mainly went in there to buy Pokemon cards and Beanie Babies because as a kid, <laughs> that's what I loved. <laughs> and um, yeah, so really there wasn't anything that I related to in terms of comics when, when I was a kid. But I did travel a lot and my mom would buy me digests uh, to read while I was on the plane because I would travel back and forth to Honduras. And those digests were, would be um, Betty and Veronica or Archie and, and Garfield. Reading Betty and Veronica at the time of like being 11 years old, I didn't relate because I didn't have boy problems and or best friend problems because I was a loner too. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, or, and Garfield is a cat, so it's just kind of a read and forget type of stories. Uh, so I, I wasn't relating to those. And in my teenage years, I'm actually surprised I didn't meet Jenna because I would loiter, mostly loiter, in the in the library because that's what you did when you had nothing to do. <laughs> and I would read, just or not read, actually, I was spending most of my time listening to angry music or watching horror films and gory movies. So it wasn't until my early 20s when I started watching the early seasons of The Walking Dead and I got so curious about the series that um, I wanted to learn more about it, found out that it was actually, it came from comics. So I went out and read hundred, over a hundred issues uh, in the course of a week and essentially I have Robert Kirkman to thank for my interest in comics because at that point it was... Um, in, in the early 2000s, uh, the horror genre and the, mis the mystery genre, it's always been there, but it had a concrete place in, in the comic world at that time. So I, I realized that there were stories that interested me, and, and I just wanted to find out more, and I read fantasy, mystery, thriller, suspense, and it was awesome. Uh, so how do you think the comic book climate is changing now? Over, in the course of history, it's, it's interesting that, that businesses realize that once they start uh, marketing to women with disposable income, 
that, oh my gosh, their revenue starts to go, to, to skyrocket, really. Women like to read. <laughs> exactly. So yeah. publishers realized, thank God, that we can read, right? <laughs> that uh, we, we like to read, and we are going to spend money on the stories that we like. And I, I'm going to credit Gail Simone on this, because... She, in, in 1999, we're going back almost 20 years, she started a website called Women in Refrigerators. She started voicing her opinion about women in, how women are portrayed in the comic industry, which is as a plot device. Secondary or characters. Secondary characters and all the tropes that, that go with uh, female characters. So I'm going to thank her because that led to an increase in female creators and just uh, female creative stories. So uh, now I think that females have more representation and a better and a stronger voice in the industry. So those stories uh, that they're creating, I love them because it's not just boobs and tight clothes. <laughs> but um, we should probably talk about that because... Yeah. Uh, um, I, was actually, I was actually on Tumblr last night, if any of you are on Tumblr. I don't know, not that it's like a place where people meet, but <laughs> um, I was looking up the Hawkeye Initiative. Do you guys know what that is? Okay, so Colors. basically it's, um, it's, I don't know who started it, but people take uh, the covers of comic books and the posing and the positioning that women are in, and they put male characters such as Hawkeye into these positions. <laughs> And it's just so ridiculous. You see, you like, you don't notice it, I guess, when you're just like, oh, this is super cool. Catwoman looks awesome in her in her onesie spandex suit, and then like you see a male figure in that same position. You're like, oh wow, this is like very salacious. <laughs> <laughs> but okay, but why do women? What like? Your decolletage is just open for people to just stab you in the heart. Like, that doesn't make sense. Like, I'm like, this, you should probably have some armor here. <laughs> so, uh, essentially, there are a lot of differences. Yeah, especially in naming, too. Um, women, like, uh, superhero abilities in general. Women are more thoughtful, and men are usually more physical and strong. And when it comes down to the naming, women are usually something towards their femininity, towards their passivity. Like, girl is, like one of the number one naming mm -hmm. devices and um, men it's usually either they have an actual name because they're a person like Thor <laughs> yeah and they, you don't need to identify them as men um, which yeah. is super interesting so why is representation important then? Um, so you feel important um, there's such thing as learned helplessness where you only are a product of what you see around you and society around you. So if you feel like you can only be a damsel, that's all you're ever going to... You're not even going to think bigger than that. Like, it's just subconscious. Like Yeah, and, and actually there are accumulated effects to uh, the increase of consumption that we have over visual media. And, and comic books are visual media, which is how the world explains how we should be essentially through through entertainment and through comic books. So what Jenna was talking about, um, there's a there's a concept called uh, symbolic annihilation, which essentially means if you have no representation, you're not important. Which is why Wonder Woman was such a, a huge thing for, for women and uh, so was Black Panther for, for people of color. And there's also another concept which Jenna touched is if uh, it's called the limiting effect. So, if we're only seeing ourselves as damsels, we're going that's or um, shown provocatively, uh, 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 hypersexualized, then that's the only thing we feel we're going we amount to in society. So that's literally why it's important to have a uh, fair and genuine representation of women in entertainment overall and in the comic industry. Uh, so we really inspire, want, want to inspire others to live their best lives as themselves, and we're going to continue to demand fair representation. Oh, definitely, because there's this idea of tolerance that it's like, oh, you should have to put up with, like, you know, including people, and I don't think that's the right message that we should be sending. We should be definitely celebrating um, our differences and the fact that there's, you know, a whole other half of the population out there Absolutely. that, you know, wants to see ourselves represented in entertainment and media. 
um, like today we see a lot more mm-hmm. super heroines and super heroine villains. And <laughs> <laughs> We're starting to see that this is amazing, but how can it get better is the question. Um, less limited runs and stop saying like Mira just came out and like I understand like comic book artists like they have schedules and you know they're they they only want to agree to a certain amount of time like I get that part but like yeah absolutely you know (laughs) everyone was super excited for it to come out and like I hope that it gets like a second run yeah you were saying that it was sold out like that should be the evidence enough that this would be a, a really great series mm-hmm. to continue past six issues. Right. So, mm-hmm. one thing that we should do better is continue the series for longer than ten <laughs> issues <laughs> right. um, for and female-created um, and inspired stories. Right, because there's so many stories out there, and the whole thing that Marvel did with um, making Spider-Man a woman and Thor a woman, and how they're like, oh, it didn't work, we had to cancel these series, and it's like, well, we have our own stories, like, we don't need a man's story to be cool and represented and sell, you know, issues. Women don't have to take on the history of what Iron Iron Man or or Superman, We, we have, like you're saying, we have our own stories to tell, so we should have our own uh, created and uh, genuine protagonist, essentially. Yeah, definitely quality over quantity, I would say. Well, we want quantity, too, but... <laughs> <laughs> definitely. In terms of what else that do I want, um, authentic protagonists, awesome stories uh, that aren't based on gender, meaning uh, they're not laced with, with female stereotypes. And I really want our publishers to continue greenlighting uh feminine creator or uh, female creators creating stories for females because essentially that um, debunks the notion that women aren't as capable of, of as men in terms of creating these series or, or in their skills of, of writing and, and drawing. People get really uncomfortable with diversity and I don't understand why because... I don't know. I said one thing about female Ghostbusters and I got like this whole like backlash like this was on tumblr i'm always on tumblr um and i was just like they're like oh they're pandering to you i'm like who's this what do you mean pandering like why can't a woman be a ghostbuster like no one said it was like a men's only club and yeah but with including diversity in, in our stories it brings out this innovation and it's not boring to just read uh you know male created uh, white male stories there's so right. many people in right. our world that need the representation and and yeah that brings forward new ideas and uh, evolves um, the storytelling and, and the industry because the demographic is growing the demographic is changing and evolving so the publishers uh, realize this and are finally starting to meet it what do you appreciate the most in, in our movement um, I appreciate that there are a lot more comics that are geared towards women that are, um, you're seeing, you know, Batgirl, Birds of Prey, I mean, those aren't the only two comics I read, but, you know, like, Harrow County is such a, a great comic, and it's based on this young woman, and it's not, like, the story that's, oh, it's because she's a girl, or her female experiences, it's like, it's just, like, no matter what the gender of the main character was, it's such a great story. Yeah, and some people might disagree with me, but I'm actually really happy that um, there has been a, an, a geek boom in the mainstream, essentially because that just opens the door for more more voices to, to be heard. And uh, yeah, so, so seeing uh, characters like Jessica Jones get her own Netflix series, which I'm sure Disney is, is behind the whole women power power <laughs> thing. But um, yeah, I, I love seeing that now because we have... Um, it's opening the doors like it did for me to start reading comics for for all of that to trickle down into the comic industry so we have more female readership and essentially that will grow our our female stories and is there anything else you're excited for i'm excited for i'm just really stoked on all the female creators out there i mean we have emma cooper out there who's going who's going to kill it taking over her her grand her grandfather and her uncle and her dad's legacy so i'm stoked for for female creators like nicola scott who her wonder woman is one of my favorite most beautiful wonder woman and and her story black magic that's my favorite female protagonist right now it's yeah, awesome yeah i definitely second that um so yeah i think it's time we open up the floor to what you guys 
having yeah. us. Uh oh, this is gonna be rough. <laughs> what are you guys excited for? <laughs> yeah. Do you guys have a favorite female protagonist? Betty Cooper. Oh, really? Ooh. All right. Why is that? Riverdale. So you like Riverdale? What do you think about um, the art, like the Archie publishers creating, or, or kind of like? Pushing this new, new uh, Betty and Veronica. I mean, um, you know, like they kind of have like their, it's kind of like their counterparts on um, like from the comics, like yeah. Betty having the iconic ponytail and uh, um, Veronica's being like uh, her father and her mom being like, like the rich, the rich family in Riverdale, yeah. and then also with like taking other characters, for example, like Archie and things like who's the most iconic character of the whole universe, um, <clears throat> and, you know, making him into, like, one of those people who, like, you can do, like, I really don't like Archie in the show, but, like, he's more of, like, they kind of took some of his counterparts, but... So you like Riverdale, the show, more so than the actual comic? I do like the comic and the show, but okay. I'm more, like, of, like, the comic book, Yeah. but I do like the show a lot, so... Nice, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, one thing that I'm, I was so stoked about was actually Corey told me that his daughter uh, is really excited to meet us, and that just it just really inspires me to continue doing this because she's probably six years old and has people to look up to in the industry, and that just really like warmed my heart because <laughs> uh, she's the cutest little girl ever. <laughs> so I'm, so, I'm I excited. Yet, but I'm excited to talk Pokemon with her because I know that's her favorite. <laughs> Any other questions? I feel a little hard. Oh, gosh. But if money and team weren't a problem for your YouTube channel, what would you want to do for yourself to add to your goal? Like maybe a Ooh. comic series, a live action series, your own kind of female protagonist or antagonist. I yeah. think you named them. <laughs> I think um, you just named them because we were asked that on our live stream actually, and we were just like, uh, "Yeah, we would love to have our own comic." Yeah, I would uh, love to create a comic. I have like a few ideas. Jen is an like, awesome writer, by the way. <laughs> she writes plays and scripts and stuff. So yeah, she would make an excellent comic writer. And I, I can't draw, but I, I'll. I'm looking at you guys draw. I mean, I um, no, I would need some lessons. I try to watercolor, but like I, I can't, I can't draw. We could color the yeah. comic and find a kick-ass girl to, to draw it. That would be cool. Yeah. Yeah, I took drawing in college and. Um, I put up my first drawing that I made on the board, and then someone went up to it and like chuckled at it. So I'm like, all right, maybe I'm not that artistic. <laughs> I'll stick to writing. Yeah, um, but yeah. So people who don't know us, we are on YouTube and we do live stream on Sundays on, on our Instagram. Talk about which comics we're excited to read um, that are coming out that that week, and that's been that's been awesome. Yeah. Thank you guys. Yeah. Thank you.